right, well, the time has finally come. I bought a new truck. Now, some of you might be confused if you've watched this channel for a long time. You maybe have seen the whole Fummins build and you think, why would I get a new truck? You know, this is kind of my ultimate tow rig build that everything I wanted to this truck tried to make a truck that accomplished all the goals. You know, I had bounced around from one used diesel truck to another. I tried just about everything in the sub $25,000, $20,000 range. And I just, they all had some major pitfall. They all had some major pitfall. And that's what led me to building this whole truck from the ground up. And we've had it for a while. It's been a good truck, but I think it's finally time. I, it is obviously finally time to step into something newer. So a little backstory about my truck history, because all of that for me at least is what makes this such a big deal to finally have a new truck is just monumental for me. It's crazy. It's, it's awesome. It's something I've wanted for a very long time. So basically I started out with a first gen Cummins truck and the idea was it's as simple and mechanical as it gets just basic, no frills, all mechanical, mechanical engine, mechanical transmission, no wiring to worry about, no computers, no electronics, simple. And if anything broke, it would be easy for me to fix it myself because that's how I've always been. I always fix everything myself. Um, so that's a big thing I look for when I'm buying something is, is it easy to work on? Because I know who's gonna work on it, me. So that was the big reason for getting that truck. And while the concept was cool, in reality, it didn't work out that great. So that truck was a neat truck. I, I really, I'd love to have it again, just to have as a fun get around truck, but it was not a great long distance tow rig. I tried to fix it up. I put Silverado seats in it because it had a, a really uncomfortable bench seat and it helped, but I mean, it was a cramped single cab. It rode like a bag of bricks. Didn't really want to cruise above 65. 70, you felt like you were pushing it. The brakes were terrible. Uh, just not not an ideal setup for trying to tow long distance. And after uh, eight to 10 hour drive each way to Atlanta for grid life, I realized this wasn't what I wanted. As much as I wanted to make it work because it was simple and easy, it, it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something newer and more comfortable. So I sold that truck. Luckily I got decent money for it. I made a little profit on it. And I took what I sold it for plus 350 bucks and bought an LLY Duramax. Now I got really lucky finding this truck. Uh, because I got it for 8850 bucks. It was a super good deal. It was basically the cheapest one out there, but it was really well kept. It was garage kept. The paint was really nice. The underside was brand new. One, no rust, but two, you could tell it never had a leak. You know, a vehicle that's had a leak at one point in its life, it's really hard to get all that cleaned off. This thing was immaculate. Um, and it was a really good truck. At the same time, my buddy was looking to buy an open trailer. So I sold him my open trailer that I bought for cheap and fixed up. And for an extra 50 bucks on top of what I sold him my old trailer for, I had found an 18 foot steel deck open trailer. And it looked rough because it was rusty, uh, but it was actually a really, really nice trailer. Cleaned it up, painted it. And for $400, we had upgraded the whole tow rig from the first gen with the beat up wood deck, 16 foot trailer to the LLY Duramax with a nice 18 foot steel deck trailer. And that was a setup I ran for a long time and I was honestly happy with it. Um, I had debated the idea of getting an enclosed, but I, at the same time, I was like, it's not like this Duramax tows this open trailer with my car on it, you know, all loaded down like it's nothing, you know? It, you can definitely tell it's back there, especially going up big hills and going through the mountains up north. So my thought was, you know, with an enclosed, man, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work to tow an enclosed. It's gonna be a lot harder on the truck. So that was always my dilemma. I went back and forth for a while. Well, then a deal popped up. A friend of mine was selling his third gen Dodge Mega Cab four wheel drive Cummins with a gooseneck enclosed trailer for basically what the truck was worth. And I couldn't pass it up. I just couldn't pass it up. So I went down there, I picked it up and he told me, you know, hey man, your Duramax is nice, just keep your Duramax, upgrade it, sell this truck. Uh, the, you don't wanna keep this truck. But when I towed the trailer home, I was like, man, this thing tows this thing a lot better than I think my Duramax would do. I'm not gonna just keep this. Now in hindsight, I should've just upgraded the Duramax exhaust, you know, in a tune. And who knows where we'd be today if we'd have both these trucks here or not, who knows. Uh, but I didn't, I chose not to. And the big reason for that was the Duramaxes are very difficult to work on. They are incredibly complex. I mean, the ECU is mounted to the valve cover and fluid cooled by the fuel, like some craziness. And working on it myself, I knew if the injectors needed to be replaced, it was gonna be a nightmare. Whereas the Cummins, which is my big favorite thing about the Cummins is very 
very simple to work on. You could change the injectors in a couple hours versus a couple days. So that's why I decided to keep the Cummins. Now, that was a bad choice. So the Cummins truck ended up uh, being a pretty much a, a little bit of a nightmare. One, it had rust, which I knew, but I mean, the rust wreaked havoc. Uh, the front control arms both broke on it. Uh, transmission cooler lines rusted through. It didn't have AC working when I bought it. I replaced the whole AC system and then realized that the circuit board, because instead of having traditional fuses and relays that has a circuit board, was bad on the AC circuit. And not only are they $1,000, but you can't even buy them. So then I had to bypass it and I got it working. And then the fan clutch went out and every trip we made with this thing, there was something. There was some problem. And we made multiple trips all the way to Texas, which is about an 18 hour drive. And you know, going 18 hours, not knowing if you're gonna make it, it's tough. It's stressful. Um, so I, I, after the one of the after the last Texas trip, I decided, you know what, I'm selling it. And while I was there, I had hung out with some buddies of mine who happened to have seven three trucks on semi wheels. And I, th for me, that was just the look. I didn't really ever care for a single wheel truck. Well, it didn't matter what wheels it was, but a dually on semi wheels, that did it for me. So when I got home, I just was perusing around. I was just looking. It was just an idea, you know? I had debated kind of on it. I really thought probably not something I should do. Uh, I liked the idea of the simpler, older truck, but I knew it wasn't gonna be as powerful. I stumbled upon a 7.3 on semi wheels in my neighborhood for sale on Marketplace. I was like, man, what? What? So I, obviously I had to go look at it. It was right down the road and against my better judgment, I bought it. I went and looked at it twice, and I, st I knew, I knew it was a bad choice, but for whatever reason, I talked myself into it. And uh, it was a, not, not a great choice, right? First time towing the trailer, uh, it took like a mile or two to get up to 50. And I was like, this is not gonna work. You know, just test towing the trailer. So I went back, found out it was only making eight pounds of boost. I tore it apart, went through, resealed the plenum gaskets, changed all the intercooler couplers, fixed all that, put a better tuner on it. Now it's making full boost. Now it's making full power. Still not that great, but definitely better than eight pounds of boost. So then we go on our first trip, which is only an hour and a half away, and the oil temp starts skyrocketing. I mean, we were getting up to like 265, and you know, that's a problem in general, but it's especially a problem on a 7.3 truck because the injectors are oil fired. So if your oil temps get hot, you know, that's what's controlling the pulsing of your injectors. So your engine starts not running right and can cause a slew of problems. So we limped it the rest of the way to the track, limped it home, and uh, I tore into it, went through the whole cooling system, finally fixed that. I did a few more trips with it, and I just realized this is uh, this is a totally fine truck for doing two, three, four hour local trips, but this is not something I wanna drive to Texas. It's not very comfortable inside. It's super noisy. You know, it, it struggles pulling this trailer up the hills. It doesn't ride well. You hit a bump and the thing just bottoms out. It just not a great truck for that. And I knew that when I bought it, but I somehow talked myself into it anyway. Here we are. This is where I hit my crossroads with trucks, used diesel trucks. Tried just about everything. They all had their pitfalls. So that's when I decided to build this. I was between building this and buying a used 6.7 Ford truck. Um, but the problem was I just couldn't bring myself to spend 25 or 30 grand on a truck with 150 to 200,000 miles on it. And knowing that there's definitely gonna be stuff that's gonna break soon and it's gonna be very difficult to fix myself. So that's what led us down the road to build this. Now the idea behind this is you kind of take the good parts from both manufacturers. So the Dodge had a great engine. The Cummins is a really solid engine, really reliable, really easy to work on, but the transmissions aren't that great. The trucks aren't that great. Uh, however, the Ford, great trucks, really nice trucks, really stout transmissions, but the engines this generation were absolutely terrible. The 6.4 Power Stroke. This thing is incredibly dirty, mind you. I'm not giving it a fair representation here. So the idea was you mate the two together. You've got a simple, efficient, easy to work on Cummins engine. This one's out of an 05 Dodge and a modern Ford chassis. So I sold the 7.3 truck. I bought this truck with a blown motor and I bought a Cummins parts truck, pulled the engine out and we tore into this thing. Now, in the meantime, uh, I didn't have anything to tow my trailer with. So I bought this truck. So I got a good deal on this thing from a buddy of mine. It's a regular cab short bed Silverado 1500. And while it wasn't the ideal tow rig, I knew one day I wanted to do a turbo LS street truck. So we've since got around to turboing it and it, this thing's an absolute riot.
it's a ton of fun i'm glad we were finally able to knock that out but it was a really solid tow rig for the better part of a year now as good as it did for what it is a tiny little regular cab short bed truck fitting two people luggage tools spare parts 20 tires and heading out to compete in this thing it was definitely tight it was definitely a bit of a struggle uh, we just you know we'd have to store our luggage inside the car we couldn't really stay at a hotel because we didn't have anywhere to lock stuff up it was it was one of those things it was a sacrifice that i made to deal with using this as my tow rig for a year so we could build that truck now she's a full-time turbo street truck what is her life doing burnouts so with this thing we went through the whole truck i pulled the cab off to pull the old engine out and put the cummins in i refreshed the cummins i did a head gasket head studs went through everything we did all the steering stuff upgraded steering box smb cab mounts uh suspension bumpers we went through this thing front to back and at the end of the day we it, it lived up to every expectation you know when i set out to build it i was kind of weary you know if it was going to be a project that would turn out like i hoped you know and and it did it, it was great it's done everything it's supposed to do if you didn't know this thing had a cummins in it you wouldn't know i mean if you know how they sound you would notice that you know that it sounds like that but everything works like a factory truck but and the key fires right up tack works domino works speedo works there's the check engine light but other than that you would have no idea that this truck was coming swapped AC works. We did a full Mishimoto cooling system, intercooler, radiator, trans cooler, intercooler pipes. I had to build our own, but I'm turning this thing off, it's loud. We also went through much later and swapped in King Ranch seats. We got the heating and cooling working, so they're heated and cooled like they would be in a factory truck and really built this thing out to be what my goal was, which was comfortable, easy to work on. And the thing with that too is power is a big factor in that, you know? Having a powerful truck just means it's easier to tow the trailer. It's less strain on the truck. It's less work on you because you have that power there whenever you need it to climb a hill, to pass somebody, so on and so forth, to pull out into traffic, etc. Um, so that was, I was hoping to have power similar to a newer truck, um, but, with a simple package and while this truck has been really good and you know i, I can't knock this thing at all because it has never left a strand and it's never left me a reason to doubt it you know it being a swap truck it's basically a heavily modified vehicle so we have had some things to tinker with over the time and little issues here and there that we had to figure out but for the most part it's been a good truck i put thirty-five thousand miles on it mostly towing but the time had finally come so uh, it dawned on me one day that i don't have not one normal vehicle that thing's got a turbo ls that's a race car we got the miata race car we got a 90s japanese car with a honda motor and a gm trans we got another 90s one an 80s slammed corolla like we we don't have one normal vehicle so the idea has been there for a while to get something newer and something just kind of get in and go something simple just normal newer vehicle uh, however i don't really have any purpose or use for a newer car as much as i'd like a newer sports sedan it just I don't need it but tow rig on the other hand it's a different story you know if i break down going to tampa in my turbo truck or the pulsar or whatever it is what it is like it, it'll probably mess up my day but you know i can find a way to get it home my friend can pick me up someone can go pick up my truck and trailer drive it down and tow me back like there's always a solution it's an inconvenience however you break down towing a gooseneck trailer halfway across the country you've got your truck broken down with your trailer, with your race car in it, with your spare parts, your tools, your tires. You got your whole livelihood in one shot. And it's not like you can just have a tow truck pick them all up at once. You know, you got to get the tra truck towed and then try to get the trailer towed. You're not going to want to leave it on the side of the road. It's, it would be a disaster. And because of that, uh, tow rig reliability is important to me. And I I'm probably way more paranoid about breaking down towing than most people. I had a really bad towing experience. My first long distance trip, I was trading my beat up Porsche 944 for this really clean turbo E36. And it was such a good trade that I spent the last dimes I had to put diesel in my friend's dad's truck for us to take it all the way to Virginia to trade cars. And we broke down pretty much the whole way. By the end, we were stopping every mile to spray brake cleaner in the intake to get it going again. And I just remember that 
feeling of what are we going to do? I don't have the money to pay for a hotel. I don't have the money to fix this thing. We're trading a running car for a kind of non-running car. We're not going to have any way to get home. I'm going to get fired from my job. And I think every, I think because of that is why I'm so paranoid about breaking down. So the idea of a newer truck was just not even have to question it, not have to worry about it. Now that being said, newer trucks can break down too. Uh, but the big thing too is the comfort. So we're trying to upgrade the race program. You know, we've been stepping it up. We upgraded the trailer about a year ago and that made a huge difference. We went to a shorter trailer that ended up being way better for what we want to do. We did our own custom cabinets. We have better organization. It has a full gooseneck versus my own one that had a half. So we get more storage where we need it while losing overall length. This thing from the bumper of the truck is only two feet longer than my open trailer, my 18 foot open trailer. That setup really was optimized. We can get into really tight areas. It's an aluminum trailer. It's it's really nice to tow, better fuel economy. And we're end up able, we're able to bring more stuff with us and keep it better organized. Um, so that was the idea. And this kind of falls along the same lines, just stepping up our race program to where if there's some crazy big shootout tomorrow in California, we could jump in this thing and go and not have to give it a second thought, not have to check anything, not have to change anything, literally just, get in, hook up to the trailer and go. And that's really the goal. I I've got to admit, I'm pretty excited because keep in mind, I have never owned anything remotely new. This is the newest vehicle I own and it's an 08 and I bought it with a blown motor out of a field. So <laughs> I've never had some nice newer vehicle that you just get in and go and it's quiet. And as I've gotten older, man, I it's weird to me, but that's what I want, you know? I want that no wind noise nice ride smooth window operation just something that's just comfortable and effortless to drive and man that's what this truck is these six seven trucks as good as this truck is and as solid as it is these things are just in another week specifically the six seven they make absolutely insane power insane power bone stock 10 speed transmission so you got a gear for every every speed they're so nice inside they're crammed with features so i eased myself into the idea of buying a new truck and i realized you can't really buy a new truck right now it's like a seven month lead time you can't even order them right now so i wouldn't even have it until maybe midway through next race season so i started looking at used trucks and i found this truck and it literally fit all the criteria had all the options i wanted well i looked at it and decided to buy it so here it is Here's a new truck. I know that was long-winded, but this is something I've been thinking about for even before I built that truck. Not getting a new truck, but getting a newer truck like this. And this is gonna make such a big difference on long trips. Being able to just cruise control at 75, 80, and the more effortless the trip is, the easier the whole experience is. You know, it's a lot of work to drive 18 hours straight and unload the trailer and race and compete at the best you possibly can, load everything up, drive 18 hours back home. So the easier we can make that trip to and from, the easier it's gonna to be to do these weekends and more of them we can do, basically. So I know there's a whole lot of jibber jabber about my, my history, but now you know. Got a new truck. So this is 2020, it is used. It's got about 30,000 miles on it. Four wheel drive Lariat. I um, mean, like I said, it's got pretty much all of the options. So when I first saw it, I wasn't uh, online. I wasn't sure if I wanted it because of the tan interior, but as soon as I saw it in person, uh, I was like, yes, this is it. This is it. So if you know about these newer trucks, none of this will be new to you. But for me, this is like living on, uh, living on Mars. <laughs> so we've got the heated and cooled seats like the Fummins does. One of the things I'm most excited about the 360 camera so we can see all the way around the truck this was showing in front now it's going to show behind we've got a gooseneck camera for when we're hooking up the gooseneck trailer we've got front wide angle um, and we can add a, tra a camera to the back of the trailer that will look behind the trailer as well as tire pressure monitoring sensors for the trailer so we can see if we have a trailer tire leaking which that's the number one reason why people blow trailer tires out is because they leak down and you don't notice because it's on your trailer and then you blow one um and then this stuff's just crazy to me like all these things you can go through it's a full-on freaking tv in the dash look at that tire pressures digital speed engine hours trans temp the towing stuff, we can do all sorts of stuff there. Off-road, we're on a two degree incline. 
uh, absolutely crazy. Another really cool thing with that truck, it did have a backup camera. I'll, I'll have to show it to you, but it, it was a tiny little camera in the rear view mirror. So you, it's pretty hard to see out of, but I'd always get lined up to the gooseneck with the camera, then get out, open the tailgate. This truck, tailgate's dropped. Just press of a button so I can back up, get close to it, boom. I can also do that on my freaking keys, which is crazy. Uh, one touch windows. Um, it's got the lighting package, so it, it's got little accent lights in the door pockets and here and the cup holders and it, that stuff might all sound silly, but it makes a big difference. It's really nice. Uh, it's got like the leather wrap dash. I feel bad parking it in the sun, but I don't want to park it under the trees. But being able to just get out the key, it locks. So you can see the tailgate drops. It's got the puck system for the gooseneck, which is really nice. I love that OEM setup. I have the hitch and the safety chain hookups in a little case. You just pop them in, you're good to go. When you're not using them, take them out. Uh, it's got the in-bed lighting. So obviously you're not gonna really be able to see it now, but it turns that light on too. Lights up the whole bed, super nifty. We've got the double trailer plugs. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff with the trailer plug onto the trailer. Um, it's Rhino, it's bed lined, bully, bullet lined. Really nice spray in bed liner. It's got mud flaps, which I, I don't necessarily like, but also they are gonna, they will make a big difference in keeping the truck from getting rock chips. The only option it doesn't have that I wanted is the automatic folding steps. That's really the only thing it didn't have. But it's uh, this really nice pearl white. It's dirty again already. Really nice pearl white. I'm not normally huge on white vehicles, but I always wanted my truck to match the trailer, and with this thing, I was considering wrapping the trailer black, but it's gonna make the trailer a lot hotter inside, so getting a white truck yeah, works out better than wrapping the trailer black, so. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Obviously, I mean, it's just a stock 2020 Super Duty, so if you know what the features are, you, you know, you know, there's nothing, it's not like a built truck, which is a weird feeling for me. I'm used to driving a truck I built from the ground up, so it's just stock truck, but man, I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to get in this thing and it just cruise down the road silent and the power we have already towed the trailer with it and whoo boy it's life-changing so uh, I want to take you guys for a little test though I got to move the trailer around anyway so we'll get hooked up to the trailer and take it for a little cruise I need to pull the toolbox out of the other truck just I have too much stuff to put inside this thing. I don't want to tear up the interior. I think this setup is so cool. I'm just, <laughs> I'm such an old man now. I just like factory stuff. All right, it just installed. Alright, let's get hooked up to the trailer here. So, like I said, we'll use the backup camera to get lined up. Drop the tailgate. Switch camera views. Look at that. Beautiful. The hard part is having something nice. I'm not used to having to be cautious when I climb over the wheel arch or Alright, let's go for a drive.
Yeah, the 10 speed is crazy and the shift strategies are so good. It's just crazy. If you're taking off of a grade or aggressively, it'll use every gear. But if you're cruising slow with the trailer, it'll skip gears. It's, it's definitely like, I gotta be careful to not go too fast. So quiet, so quiet. It's like half throttle, maybe quarter. <laughs> it's so funny. I can't get over it. You can accelerate up to normal traffic speed, like no problem. It doesn't even feel like you're trying that hard. It's so quiet and comfy. I gotta turn my AC seat on. I'll turn yours on too. And we'll turn the engine brake on. Let them hear the engine brake. But yeah. I mean, you get the gist. It's a truck towing a trailer, but it's just so easy. Like, it takes so minimal energy to tow. Like, I don't have to hard. I mean, I, obviously, I gotta be focused and aware, and I'm not saying I'm over here taking a nap, but like, it's just easy. It drives like, it drives like a car towing a 32 foot gooseneck trailer. You see, we're in ninth gear at 45. Jeez, did you see it? Mm hmm. Every time I get on it with the trailer, it blows me away. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. It's everything I hoped it would be for sure. We would talked about it on road trips and just in general for probably a year. Six months, a year, just on and off. Man, it would be kind of nice to have a new truck. Ah, it'd be kind of nice to have a new truck. And then it got more serious. And then, uh, yeah, here we are with a new truck. And, uh. And say I don't regret it a bit, man. I can't, I'm just raring and ready to go. I'm like, we need to be taking trips, let's go. <laughs> I just want to use it. It's quietness. Yeah, it's so quiet. It's not like yelling at you. Nothing wrong with that, but. No, the phone is definitely way more raw, like way more, way cooler. Uh, but this is just the old man in me. This is nice. Just want to get in my comfy truck and meander our way to the track at 80. <laughs> I feel bad beating on it because I never, I'm, I have a lot of mechanical sympathy and that's the other problem with me towing. If I just didn't pay attention to whatever, but I'm like, oh, I'm trying not to run, make too much boost for too long and I'll, I'll start tapering off as we crest the hill and I just think about what's going on too much. So having a truck that just does it no matter what I don't have to think about it I can just drive it now one thing uh, I need to get some sort of trailer sensor so I can do the fancy backup where it shows me down both sides of the truck and trailer because that would be the nicest but I don't have that yet but I mean just having the 360 camera oh we gotta back it into the This thing off, get unhooked. I'll never get over that. Chris door shut. Oh, so here's what it looks like hooked up to the trailer. The trailer needs a good cleaning. It's uh, they don't really match when this thing's super dirty, but it is nice for them to finally match. It'll look oh, it's gonna look so good once this thing has semi wheels. Now, that is the plan. I want to put semi wheels on this truck. I don't really have any interest in any other wheel designs or styles like none of the other stuff really does anything for me but i just absolutely love the dually with semi wheels look now we could just snag the wheels off this thing put them on there and we're good to go but uh the wheels make this truck i don't want to separate them uh this truck wouldn't be what it is without the semi wheels so my plan is to do a giveaway on this truck and uh i don't know there's a few reasons for that it's just it's got it does have a lot of sentimental value but at the same time, I have no no reason to keep two dualies. So uh, I just think it'd be a good thing to do a giveaway on it. It's much more useful than the Pulsar or Drift Car or something like that. It'd be, be a very useful truck for somebody. So 
Uh, that's the plan, but that is gonna take a little bit of time. It's probably gonna take us a few months to get everything set up to do that. So it is gonna be sitting for a bit and we could steal the wheels off it for the meantime, but I know myself and if these wheels come off this truck, they're not going back on it. So we're gonna leave it alone. And not to mention the whole point of this is to have a bone stock untouched vehicle since I don't have a single one of those. And if we change the wheels in the first week of ownership, it doesn't really work out. But anyway, I am, I'm just stoked, man. I, I can't get over it. Just having a newer vehicle in general is is like life changing to me. I've never had anything remotely new. I've always bought older stuff and fixed it up myself. And so to have something so new and so fresh and with all the new features and the, the comfort and still so so nice, like it's just it, it's mind blowing to me. But for that to be the tow rig, especially, that just makes it you know it's a whole nother level. It's just it's gonna set us up for doing even more than we're already doing, you know and traveling more, traveling further. I, I just, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to start doing road trips in this thing. I love traveling for events and just the peace of mind and the comfort is gonna be, it's gonna be so nice. Oh, just like a double whammy. So anyway, I'm Jibber Jabber and I'm rambling. Uh, we need to get this thing unhooked from the trailer. We need to get the trailer cleaned up. We got tires to mount. We gotta get the Miata ready, but we are going drifting here in a few days. So we're gonna take its first real inaugural voyage. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm, <laughs> I'm as excited just to, to, to tow with the truck for the first, you know, real drive as I am to go drifting. <laughs> Silly, I know, but I just like tow rig. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end it out here. Uh, that's a new truck. Let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, I'm I'm stoked, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Sad to get rid of the Fummins, but she'll go to a good home. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.